Well, now we turn our attention to Olympia and the legislative session. This week, lawmakers focused on several major issues. Steve Bunin and Drew Mickelson are in session. Yeah, the, you had the House and Senate tackling everything from potential gas tax hikes to a state dinosaur as they're working to balance a budget in the middle of a pandemic and obviously the rough economy. So a lot to break down. Drew Mickelson joining us from Olympia. Drew, so we're starting to hear about a uh, COVID relief package coming out for the state, but that's not the only thing, of course, that lawmakers are trying to work on. No, you know, Steve, this session is mostly online. A lot of uh, sessions happening or debates happening over Zoom calls, but that's not stopping lawmakers from rolling out all kinds of legislation and some rather controversial ones as well. Just in this past week, we heard about a new wealth tax proposal that would target the state's 100 billionaires, including Amazon's Jeff Bezos and Microsoft's Bill Gates. Also, we heard that some graduation requirements for high school might be waived because of emergencies like a pandemic. And here we are, another week, another proposed gas tax hike. Lawmakers say the state needs to spend billions on road improvements and because of a U.S. Supreme Court order demanding the state retrofit hundreds of bridges and roads currently blocking waterways for salmon looking to spawn. A proposal from the House of Representatives last week called for a 10 cent a gallon increase this year with another 8 cent hike in 2022. A Senate proposal this week, though, called for a 6 cent a gallon increase which would go into effect this July. And then drew a lot of controversy over this one, this bill to limit where people can visibly carry weapons. What exactly would the bill do? So it's, it's called the Open Carry Act. And right now it is legal for you to openly visibly carry a weapon at a demonstration or on the state capitol campus. But this bill would prohibit that. You would not be able to carry openly a weapon into the state capitol. You still would have a concealed weapons permit holder would still be able to have their weapons. This would also apply to demonstrations anywhere in the state. And you can't open carry under this proposal within a thousand feet of a demonstration. So some gun owners say it's too broad and it would make law abiding gun owners less safe. Seattle's interim police chief, though, and several victims of shootings supported the bill, which did pass out of committee. So it is moving along despite concerns it might put the freedom of speech, the First Amendment over the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. Do you not see a conflict of logic to support uh, a First Amendment right? You're introducing a bill that suspends the Second Amendment right? We put restrictions on amendments all the time, and this is just a logical extension of a restriction. It doesn't suspend the Second Amendment right. You still have that right. You just are limited to where you can exercise it. And we already do that. I mean, right now, you can't bring your gun into a courthouse. Try it. And uh, Drew, we heard about police accountability bills early in this session. This is obviously a topic that a lot of people are talking about in a lot of cities. Uh, what's happening in Olympia about it now? Well, this past week, two new proposals came out. One would establish a new state agency to investigate all police shootings and police uh, custody related deaths. A more controversial one comes down to establishing a state de-escalation standard, a statewide standard for police. It would change state law so an officer would only be able to use force if it was deemed necessary. Current law allows it when it's reasonable. Police officer organizations testified that would make it easier for officers to face criminal charges and would make their jobs more dangerous. Those who have been in these situations, I had a friend who was killed without saying a word. These things happen very fast. Sometimes we cannot de-escalate. Sometimes we cannot take cover. Sometimes we can't do those things. We have to allow for that variability. You know, each punch or kick or flashing of a gun or racial slur or transphobic insult sends a message that an officer cares more about exerting control through intimidation and humiliation than about protecting and serving. And when those acts of violence go unpunished, a culture of impunity proliferates in law enforcement and distrust grows in community. Finally, we have to update everybody on the state dinosaur bill, of course. The move to name the Sushiosaurus state dinosaur did pass out a committee. We did ask the sponsor of the bill. With everything going on in the world, the pandemic, unemployment, why this was so important. And Representative Melanie Morgan said it was important as ever because it came to her as a suggestion from a group of fourth graders in her district. And she saw it as the ultimate way to include them in the civic process. This upcoming week, 
we should hear some more serious discussions about that COVID relief package providing some assistance to those impacted by this pandemic. Steve? All right, thank you, Drew. And hopefully if people wanted a Velociraptor, they won't be disappointed. Drew Mickelson taking us in session in Olympia.